Okay, we're here to uh, show you how to make a graph using Logger Pro. It's uh, Logger Pro 3.10.1, so it has all the various current features. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to make a graph of uh, first time versus, uh, sorry, first position versus time uh, using uh, previous year's bowling ball data. So first thing I'm going to do is set my axes. So I'm going to double click on the X. Uh, the X axis is going to be time. Going to use a short time of t there, short name, and those units are going to be in seconds. Uh, I can check my options. I'm going to go with uh, filled circles, and I'm going to put them in red, so nice and bright and easy to see. Uh, decimal places, I'm going to have it be one because of the data. I have a an uncertainty of 0.2 uh, seconds, so I'm going to keep that the same. I do want error bars with this, so I'm going to put my error bar calculation check on. I am picking a fixed value. That value is 0 0.2 seconds. Now I'm going to put the vertical axis in, double click on the Y. Um, make sure I also have the filled circles there. I'm going to go with decimal places 2 because of the measurement that I had uh, for that particular axis. Uh, I'm going to put error bars in there. Now this is going to be a little different in that because the bowling ball is picking up speed as it gets toward the bottom, I'm going to say it's a little more difficult for the people at the bottom to measure than the people at the top. So I'm going to have a uh, percentage value instead of a fixed value. And I'm going to pick uh, 5% because I think that's going to work out for what I'm doing. Now that percentage might be different based on the situation, um, but uh, for here I think that'll work. Okay, that's done both the column defin the options definition for that column. i got to type in what it is. Again, this is the vertical axis, so this is going to be position. Uh, I'm going to use the capital X for position because it's moving along one axis, the uh, axis of the ramp, which I'm going to call X. Uh, the units are meters, so M, and I'm just going to hit done. All right, now, so you should see here position on the vertical and time on the horizontal. I'm going to go ahead and put in a title right now, so I'm just going to double click on the graph itself. I'm going to put in the title of uh, position versus time for a bowling ball rolling down a hill, which is where we got the data from. I can change the color of the title there, so I'm going to print in black and white. I don't really care. I'm going to leave it black, but I can change the color there. I really want to make sure I don't have connect points here. Uh, the default, I believe, is now not to connect the points, so that's good. I do want the point symbols. That'll allow me to see the bigger points instead of tiny points. I do need to leave my error bars checked on so they'll show up. If I uncheck those, then even though I've put in error bar calculations, the error bars won't show up. I could change the background style and colors, but most likely it's very un unusual when you have to do that. I'm only graphing positions, so that is checked already. Uh, I'm going to leave it right now for auto scale larger. I might have to come back here and readjust to auto scale from zero uh, based on what I end up with, but I'm going to wait to see what the graph looks like first. So for now, I'm done with those options. Now it's just a matter of putting in data, uh, time 3.3, and first position is 2. I right, notice it gave me 2.00 because I put in two decimal places and 3.3 because I put in one decimal place. Notice it also gives me two error bars, a very tiny vertical. It's only 5% of a small value. And then the horizontal error bars. Okay, I'm going to take a pause and type in the rest of the data. And then we'll come back. Okay, I plotted five data points, so I got five data points out here in my graph. Notice that the error bars in the vertical axis are getting larger as the percentage... Uh, of a bigger number becomes larger. The horizontals are staying set at 0.2 on either side, plus or minus 0.2 seconds. Uh, I'm not going to change the scale because the auto scale larger worked well here. Um, because of the error bars, I got a little bit above, a little bit to the right, and I do have 0, 0, so for now that's going to work well. Uh, this is the first set of data. My job at this point, using the analysis template, is to figure out the function of this particular case. So the next thing I'm going to want to do is a curve fit. So I'm going to do a curve fit, which is under here. It looks like a function, f of x. Looks like a parabola. Click on that. That gives me lots of choices. Um, 
in this case, I'm talking about a rolling ball picking up speed on a position time graph. That should be a um, parabola, so it should be quadratic. So I'm going to try that first. And sure enough, I get a nice line going through my data points. So that does indicate this is a quadratic. So I'm going to press OK. Now I get the data on my graph. So I get the equation. It's uh, AT squared plus BT plus C. And I get the values for A, B, and C, the coefficient values. And then I get a correlation. This got a 0 0.999. So it's a pretty good match to a quadratic. At this point, I don't really need to do anything more with this particular graph in this particular case. I can't draw best fit line because it's not linear. I can't draw maximum slopes because it's not linear. So what I'm going to have to do is linearize the data. So what I'm going to do um, at this point is look to see what do I have to do to turn this graph into a linear graph. And then I'm going to do that, and I'm going to replot that information, and I'm going to take a look, and, and then I'll be able to go on from there. All right, so this would be the first step. Whenever the graph you create from your data is not linear, your next step is going to be to linearize that data. So we'll go through that in the next video.